Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of online classes series from Dhanindayal Upadhyay Center for Kaushal DM Community College, Dhanamanjuri University. Today we will be talking about Pharmaceutical Technology 2 which is meant for BVOC second semester pharmaceutical analysis and quality assurance. So to begin with, we will be discussing about the unit operation called drying. Drying is one of the most common unit operations employed in drugs and food industries. So what is basically what is drying? Drying is the removal of small amount of water and other liquids from a material by the application of heat. So the point application of heat is quite important while the term drying comes. In this class, we will be discussing about the theoretical aspects of drying. So wh why drying is important? Because drying is cheaper than other mechanical methods of removal of water like centrifugation. And although evaporation and drying are almost the same the difference is in the case of evaporation the final product is a concentrated slurry or a suspension whereas in case of drying the final product is a dried solid so another important thing is that drying happens only when only when the humidity of the drying environment is less saturated with moisture that's when that's the case only when the drying comes effectively so the second is we know that uh, drying is mainly about the removal of water so how is water or any other liquid is, inco in, is incorporated in a solid system there are three ways that in uh, there are three ways in which the liquid is incorporated in a, in a solid the first one is being is at the surface of the solid like as in the cases of salt crystals Secondly, entirely inside of the solid, where it is in the case of the uh, sheet of a polymer where solvent has to be removed entirely from the entirety of the uh, solid. The, the third part is partly outside and partly inside of the uh, solid as in case of the uh, most of the pharmaceutical powders. So most of the pharmaceutical powders, they have their liquids incorporated partly outside as well as partly inside of themselves. The, so knowing what is a uh, drying process comes in the next topic comes that why is drying so much necessary so what are the importance or the applications of drying the first application of drying is prepare is in preparation of bulk drugs bulk drugs are the drugs which are prepared in huge quantities which is not which are not even formulated into tablets capsules or any other doses forms so before before being formulated into those doses forms they are called the bulk drugs so it is the final stage in preparation of many bulk drugs for example dried aluminum hydroxide which is used in case of antacids and spray dried lactose lactose is used as a diluent in preparation of tablets and powdered extracts like plant extracts so drying is also essential drying is also an essential unit operation after certain uh, processes like crystallization and filtration the second importance of drying is in the preservation of dr drug products because most of the time uh, those drugs that are incorporated with liquid forms tends to uh, deteriorate faster than the solid doses form it is quite known so that's why preservation of drug products is be, uh, has become quite essential for the longevity of their shelf life so there are preservation of drug products may be it from crude drugs that means drugs from the plant or animal origins which are decomposited by chemical decomposition secondly blood tissues and other skin products which are degraded by the microbial growth semi-synthetic and synthetic drugs as well as effervescent tablets which are degraded by the chemical decomposition so to prevent this kind of decomposition drying becomes essential the third important is it improves the characteristics of the <coughs> solid substances so why how drying produces materials of spherical shape uniform size and free flowing that means the flowability of the particles increases after drying so for example the granules are dried to improve the fluidity and compression of tablets 
and also it modifies the flow properties of viscous and sticky material such cases arise when we use male fern extract a plant extract so these are the improved characteristics after drying the fourth importance in, it increases the imp handling because drying almost remo drying removes the liquid material liquid liquid part from the solid what happens is it reduces the weight of the whole dried material which becomes light which which in turn reduces the cost of transportation and also drying helps in size reduction procedure so after knowing all these things there are some terminologies that one has to understand before undergoing uh, the process of drying so first two terminologies which is quite similar in themselves is bound and unbound water so in this case uh, instead of going to like each and every topic we will just do a comparison between these two so what happened is bound water is the minimum water held by a material exerting equilibrium vapor pressure less than that of the pure water so when a moisture when a or when the water content exerts a vapor pressure lesser than that of the vapor pressure of pure water then we call it the bound water whereas in case of unbound water it is the amount of the water that creates equal vapor pressure with that of the pure wa uh, pure water in the same temperature that is called unbound water so those substances having bound water that means they are exerting less vapor pressure than the pure water at a definite temperature are known as hygroscopic substances the third terminology is free moisture content or fmc is the amount of water that is practically available to evaporate from the drying material percent loss on drying is the percent ratio of mass of the water in the sample to the total mass of the sample whereas percent moisture content is the percent ratio of the mass of the water in the sample to the mass of the dry sample Whereas the drying rate is also the ratio of mass of the water in the sample to the product of time taken in, in drying and mass of the dry sample. The next is equilibrium moisture content or EMC. EMC and unbound water and bound water they are almost equal but one should be careful while understanding their definitions because in case of uh, unbound water it is the equal vapor pressure with that of the pure water that means the comparison is drawn between the sample moisture and that of the pure water whereas in case of EMC the comparison is drawn between that of the uh, sample moisture to that of the atmosphere surrounding it so why does the study of EMC is important the EMC is important because it permits the selection of experimental conditions for drying a specific product that's why it helps in the determination of experimental procedures for drying a substance that's why emc is important second thing about when we consider uh, about the emc there are two cases that can arise when the temperature and humidity are kept constant there are two cases that arises that influences the emc the number case one is also known as the desorption and case two is called sorption so what happens is when a solid having a higher emc than the surrounding is exposed in the definite con uh, temperature and humidity what happens is the solid loses water from itself to its surrounding that process is known as desorption d means going away or reducing so the desorption happens whereas in sorption what happens is like if the solid contains uh, less emc than the surrounding then what happens is like the solid absorbs moisture from the environment that process is called absorption this case can be easily understand when we are drying cloths instead while in dry dry environment what happens is, is the cloths get dried quite easily that is because the, the wet cloth has more emc than the surrounding that's why water is being lost from the wet cloth to the environment that's why the cloth gets drier faster whereas in case of the same cloth of same wetness is dried in a rainy season what happens is the because of the rainy season the atmosphere contains more uh, moisture that's why the emc of the solid itself is lesser than the environment itself that's why the moisture is being absorbed by the wet cloth and the cloth becomes more wet instead of drying so that case of absorbing moisture and losing moisture are respectively known as sorption and desorption 
The second terminology is how do we measure the EMC? Since we have already known that EMC is important in determining the experimental conditions for drying a specific drug molecule or a pharmaceutical product, the measurement of EMC becomes quite important. How do we measure the EMC? This is very simple. What happens is we will take a series of desiccators in which a number of desiccants or concentrations that control relative humidity of different concentrations will be placed a definite amount of solid will also be placed in those desiccators and we will measure we will weigh the weights of the solid samples so when uh, how long will, will we weigh the solid samples we will weigh the solid samples who, until we reach a, a constant weight of the solid samples and after reaching the constant uh, weight, we will subtract the initial weight from the final weight and it will give the EMC of the solid substance. Second is, there are two factors that affect the EMC value of any, any substance. The number one is the nature of the material, number two is nature of the year. So, since the nature of the material can be a three folds. One may be non-porous insoluble solids like talcum powders which have practically zero EMC. That means they do not contain moisture at all in themselves. Number two is for fibrous and organic substances for which the EMC values are high and variable. The third kind of solid is the porous solid solids where the EMC values are much higher and variable because since it is a porous solid, the uh, liquid or the, mo uh, the moisture can be in entrapped in their voids and can pass and exit from the solid surface easily. The next is the next factor affecting the EMC is the nature of the air. For zero humidity air, the EMC of all materials is practically zero. As the temperature increases, the EMC value of solid also increases. This is about all about EMC. The next is the drying red curve. Drying red curve is the relationship between the free moisture content or FMC and the drying red. This curve, curve is also known as FMC curve or free moisture content curve where FMC is plotted against the y-axis or the ordinate and along the x-axis the drying red is plotted. It, it represents the different stages or the changes during the process of drying which will be explained. As you can see from the graph, the, the graph is separated into four distinct regions. The, the regions representing A and the B, B and C, B, C, C, D and E. As you can see from the graph also, there are lots of terminologies written inside the graph itself. So for your better understanding. The first section or A, B section that we, you see is the initial adjustment section or initial adjustment time the time corresponding to a b represents the initial adjustment period during this period the solid absorb heat and the temperature increases that's why there is a sharp increase from the point a to b at this time the moisture begins to evaporate and thus tends to cool the drying solid after some time the temperature stabilizes this temperature is referred to as b the second time corresponding to the section b and c is called constant red period the temperature remains constant. The moisture evaporating from the surface is replaced by the water diffusing from the interior of the solid. The rate of evaporation is equal to the rate of diffusion. The moisture content at the end of the constant red period at point C is referred to as critical moisture content or CMC. The third stage of this graph is the time corresponding to the cd representing the first falling red as you can see that the red of the drying falls drastically from the point c till d which is also called as the first falling red or unsaturated surface drying during this period the surface water is no longer replaced at the red at the red fast enough to maintain a continuous film on the surface dry spots begins to appear and the red of drying begins to fall off the point D is referred to as second critical point and at this point the film of the surface water is completely evaporated. The fourth section or the time rip corresponding to the DE, the section DE is called as the second falling red period. During this period the rate of drying falls even more rapidly than the first falling red. During this period the rate of drying is dependent on the rate of diffusion of vapor of moisture to the surface of the solid. 
point E is referred to as equilibrium moisture content. Now, at last, beyond point E, the drying rate is equal to zero. That means there is no drying process taking place. Therefore, the temperature and moisture content remain constant. Drying after point C is just a waste of time and energy. This wraps up all the theoretical aspects of drying. In the next class, we will be discussing about the machines and equipment used for drying of pharmaceutical products. Thank you.